Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis, and we're glad to have you joining us. We're live streaming for uh, two shows now daily of our show. Of course, we have a morning show at 10 a.m. and now at 1 p.m. as we keep you up to date with Houston Community College news and information. Our afternoon show this afternoon, we've got some special guests. Of course, the high-tech Texan, Michael Garfield, joins us again. We're going to be talking about cleaning those devices. Michael, Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Todd. We're going to squirt and show you what to do and what not to do. All right. Thank you, Michael. We also have Ade Busala, uh, Busala Adepayo. And Busala is one of our students at HCC, and she's also an international student. Good afternoon, Busala. Mm -hmm. But first, we're going to start with Robin Brombot. And Robbie's probably one of the busiest guys that used to be behind. <laughs> He is everywhere, every time. You may have seen him in social media, but Robbie is our Director of Student Innovation and Entrepreneurship at the Southwest Houston Center. And Robbie, you've been working online recently so that you can get our faculty and staff up to date with what we're doing online. Uh, maybe you can tell us about that. Sure, Todd, thanks for having me. And, and it's not just me, it's, it's uh, a bunch of folks, <clears throat> Richard Gosselin, David White, you, uh, there, there's a lot, um, about uh, 15 to 20 folks or so faculty who are uh, power users of Canvas, which is our learning management system, and they are helping other faculty get up to speed, and uh, we're making videos, and we've got a, a course set up, and um, we're getting all of our faculties trained so they can uh, go into this online environment. Yeah, Robbie, I know there's been some concern by our students, and I know a lot of students haven't done online courses. A lot of them do all of their courses online. So we, we, <laughs> we've got a lot of courses that we're already doing, but this is a huge undertaking where we're getting all of our faculty and trained to work online and deliver education online. Where are we with that, and how are you reaching out to help those folks? So I, if I understand, I think um, I saw a number somewhere that 93% of uh, HTC faculty have gone through some sort of an online training. Uh, I'm sure that number would be higher uh, today. Um, but uh, our efforts started, uh, you know, about, uh, I want to say, seven to eight days ago. Richard Gossman set up a, a virtual faculty lounge. So those who are listening, uh, who are faculty or, and staff, uh, I would encourage you to join. Uh, on Canvas, uh, the course uh, Virtual Faculty Lounge. And in there, we've uh, set up this uh, course, announcements and messages uh, with the video uh, uh, gallery of all of our pre-recorded sessions and the tools that we have available to us. Uh, so the idea really is to get as many people, uh, as many teachers as, uh, as needed to get them to speed, make that 93, percent up to 100 percent of folks getting some sort of a training uh, from the peer uh, group and also our IT group, also our HCC online group, um, and helping them uh, feel confident with the use of technology that we're using, um, using technology that is approved by HCC. So there's consistency in offering an, on, an online class. Uh, you know, mind you, our students have multiple classes that are um, all of them are going online. So if one faculty chooses to use one tool and another something else, uh, the lack of consensus, consensus he could confuse the, the student. So we're telling them that we have three options. You have, you know, in uh, 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 we have uh, WebEx, we have uh, Cultura, and we have uh, uh, conferences. Uh, and those faculty who are getting trained, they're, they're getting step-by-step -step guidance on how to establish, how to set it up, how to use it, and um, how to maintain an online class. And we're going through the features of each one of the, the software as well. So how can I enable a quiz? How can I have a live quiz? Lots of features, Todd. We're going through each one um, to help our, our faculty uh, get some training um, you know, as this week goes live. And you, you have been, as you mentioned, you've been doing that really over the past couple of weeks. Um, what has been the reaction with the faculty after they go through some of the training? Because from what I understand, initially this training session, you know, in a perfect world, was supposed to last several weeks. Now you guys are condensing it really to get them up to date today. How is that bringing everybody up to speed that quickly? 
hard. So to be honest, I think the process is, is actually months, right? Training is, is over months of time, and we're condensing it to a couple of hours and days. Um, faculty who go through it, uh, I have probably 70 to 60 emails from faculty saying, thank you for this, thank you for responding, thank you for sharing. Um, and again, you know, our, our goal is to help our faculty you know, get the, the training and the skills. And these resources are available, but sometimes what happens is we, we have to guide folks. Uh, not everyone is, is an IT background, right? So not everyone has had this training. So everyone has to learn very quickly in a very short amount of time. Uh, and, and that means we just need to have more uh, what we call uh, power users as mentors. We need to have more peer-to-peer -peer helping. And uh, that's what's happening. So, so mm-hmm. Robbie, where can faculty go to uh, access your your uh, faculty lounge, and where can students and faculty go to get trained? So, you know, for faculty, I highly encourage them to. Uh, I shared a link earlier, Todd, with, the, with the, your group. Uh, if they can make those links available, the the virtual yeah. faculty lounge uh, in Canvas, the course there would be perfect. And to uh, gain access to that course, I shared a link with the group. Uh, you know, make that available. And uh, if, if you're not able to find it, then reach out to me, ravi.drumba.hccs.edu or Richard Goslin, um, uh, David White, a lot of folks that you guys know. Uh, reach out to us and then we'll tell you how to get there and uh, help. Yeah, we're going to be placing those links in our social media and you'll also find them in the recorded version of the show as well so you can access that. And Robbie, they can also get a hold of you through social media. You want to mention that as well? Yeah, so, uh, you know, if you search for my name, uh, Ravi and Brumba, B-R-A-H-M-B-H-A-T-T, I have been posting a lot of information on LinkedIn for our small business owners, uh, for, you know, small uh, startups um, as well. We've been posting on Facebook, and uh, we have a group set up uh, called, you know, HCC Let's Help Each Other. Uh, another one we just started called Eagle to Eagle uh, to, to really help the students who need help. So st we have students answering other students' questions, and we're kind of uh, validating that because if, if seven people give the same answer, there's a good chance that that is the right answer. So we're trying to kind of self-manage this peer-to-peer -peer group and let students help each other. So uh, we have two groups on Facebook that we're trying to figure out how to merge, but it's a uh, student-driven uh, group, and we're trying to let the students help each other and just moderate with a few folks to make sure that, you know, no false information is, is going viral. We're, we're killing bad information, keeping, you know, good information that, that your, your uh, group produces and making that available um, to, to the, group, to the uh, Facebook groups. That's a great way of reaching out to them, Robbie. Those Facebook groups are, are proving invaluable at this time um, as we're looking to uh, communicate in all ways. And you made a good point, folks. Um, when you are looking at information in social media, and Robbie can testify to this, um, make sure you're getting it from a good source because your, your, your friends, brothers, uncle who's sharing a rumor they heard while having coffee last week probably isn't your best source for vital information. So you can always go to hccs.edu. We have a tab at the top of the page that'll take you to all the COVID-19 resources. And just today we launched an area on our website, hccs.edu. You scroll to the bottom of the website and there is a virtual assistance uh, tab that you can press on. And if you have a, a very complicated question, go to that tab, you can enter all your information and we'll get back to you with an answer very quickly. Robbie Brombot, um, thank you for joining us on the show this afternoon and, and bringing folks up to speed with a, a monumental task you guys have underway with getting all of our faculty to, uh, to deliver learning and teaching online these days. Thank you so much, Todd. Thank you so much for all that y'all do. Thank you, Robbie. Mm -hmm. um, we are gonna go right now to Busola Adebojo, and Abusola, you have, are a student at Houston Community College. Um, you're also, you work with us here at HCC TV. We're, we're you know, very grateful to have you, not only working for us, but here with us on the show. How are you doing this afternoon? Uh, I'm doing uh, great. Uh, it's been a bit of a challenge, but uh, we're getting through it. 
Before we get started with um, uh, the video you shot, I wanted to talk with you briefly. I know um, you're from Nigeria. Have you had a chance to speak with your relatives in Nigeria? And what are the sentiments? And what's going on there right now? Yeah, um, I basically talk to them every day because um, not only am I worried, I'm also a little bit scared for them over there because uh, they generally don't have the access to all the resources we have here, especially when it comes to school or healthcare. Like they can't afford to have all of their classes online because they don't even have any decent internet services just yet. So that's that's been a bit of a challenge. And um, also, as far as the health care goes, it's it's scary because like I've been talking to my uh, brothers and sisters and literally the maybe the whole country has 10 ventilators. So oh, it's going to oh. be a scary thing to go through. And I'm just like always be I mean, I'm staying in constant contact with them just in case anything happens and I'm just generally advising them to stay stick together and not go out and for the most part they're, they're doing okay so I'm hoping it remains that way. Are they under quarantine as we are or stayed home? Have they been advised? Is there a mandate? How is that working right now? Yeah so the the whole com the whole country is just a little bit of a a weird situation going on right now. Now they are being advised to stay home but they don't really have any, uh, they don't really have any particular uh, opportunities for quarantine just yet, because even when they quarantine, how do they know what to do during quarantine? Like what medical or um, health resources can they have? Like over here, when we're in quarantine, we're advised to, you know, take vitamin C and, you know, like just generally do breathing exercises, try to avoid lots of crowds things like that they don't right. have that over there and it's just all mostly rumors and most of the information they have over there is just rumors and what they read on the internet so they don't even have the opportunity to information that will help them treat themselves so um, i'm actually working on a video where i can um, just constantly give them updates and just share with them what we are doing over here to help keep her safe and hopefully that'll help as well. Wow. Um, so you, in other words, you're you're one of their main links of information, it sounds like, because you can share vital information from guidelines we have, uh, things that you're you're saying that they may not have access to. Yes. Yusola, I want to talk with you about the um, video you shot um, and you, you're you an international student, you're here, and now you're stuck indoors all the time. And uh, maybe you can tell us, what have you been doing lately to, uh, bef now of course classes have started today, but what have you been doing over the spring break? I've just been trying to keep myself busy and not think about uh, the whole situation too much. Yesterday was my birthday, so uh, we somewhat risked <laughs> Thank you. We reached going out to visit uh, my in-laws and they had a, it wasn't a big thing, but they had a really nice surprise waiting for me. We had a cake and we ate and we definitely practiced social distancing. It was weird not being able to hug your family just because you've been apart for a while, but uh, it was pretty interesting and my friends have been uh pretty helpful as well i have one particular one that generally comes over and so she's been also been what's been helping us not be too crazy by being stuck home and also we've been like uh learning new things like i have learned quite a lot into editing and um uh my partner is a she's a uh academic consultant and she's also had to start working from home so that's been interesting as well. And thankfully we have an office space that we can do everything from. So that's been helping. And uh, actually I finally have the time to set my workspace exactly the way I want it. So that's been a fun project to get on as well. So it's it's been good. What were your thoughts when you heard that uh, things were gonna be shut down at least for two weeks? Now we're going into at least another month. What were your thoughts initially hearing that? 
I was quite scared. And honestly, I almost made us spend all of our money just so we could stock up on things. But my partner was like, no, we're going to get this. We're going to get that. We're going to get what we need so that everyone else can have access to um, stuff as well. And um, it was, uh, I, I am, a, I'm always, I've always been a planner. So I've kind of, we kind of have majority of what we needed if we had to stay home for a while but it was still a little bit scary to like be like wait i can't go out anymore that's yeah that's not been particularly fun like i have gotten dressed several times try to open the door to go out and my partner was like no you're staying home so it's been interesting what's some of the things you've heard from students that you've talked to during this time what are the, some of their concerns uh, they're mostly, okay, so I'm in a film and TV production class, and we were planning to actually shoot a short film at the end of the semester that was going to be a competition with another film and TV production class, and we were really excited about it. We've, like, designed the set, we've done everything, and now that we can't actually meet in person to uh, do that, we're trying to figure out how we can do this virtually, which uh, that's... It's, in, it's gonna be interesting because I'm curious as to how we're gonna be able to pull it out. Like we have to meet in person. It's a short film. The camera person has to be there. The actors have to be there. So we're gonna try to figure that out. I hope we do get to do it, but if not, it's gonna be a bit of a bummer. And I'm sure a lot of the other students have been expressing that as well. Like they were, we were all really looking forward to being able to shoot that project. Yusola, do you worry about future plans as far as graduating on time, go, moving on? Um, do, you, do you feel like you're stuck in a limbo right now? What are your thoughts towards that? Um, it does feel like I'm stuck a little bit, but um, I'm also choosing to just have faith right now. Um, like I just switched to the associates program at ACC and the plan was to graduate next year and move on to the next step of my career in filmmaking. And now that that might be a little bit uh, challenging, uh, I uh, honestly, I'm, I can't say I knew exactly what's going to happen, but I'm just going to keep my hair down and, you know, look at what information we get access to and what uh, resources we get access to and just try to use that to move up from there because like it's what's going on it's happened it's happened if I decide to sit down and dwell on what's not gonna happen then you know I can't move forward so I just I want to find ways that I can actually reach beyond what is going on right now and just achieve what I want to achieve Yusola, that's a great way of ending things. You know, we, we certainly enjoy having you here at HCC TV and Thank um, you. You, you do some great work and we look forward to seeing videos from you as we go through this new world we're living in. One of these days that we'll be back at HCC TV in the office. Um, mm -hmm. So we look forward, to, look forward to seeing you in person as well, there as well. Thank you for joining Thank me you. today. Yusola Areba, hey, hey ho, I, I appreciate you being here on the show. Thank you, bye. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, now we're joined by Michael Garfield, a high tech Texan, is uh, joining us live from his home abode, his home studio in the uh, Sugarland area. Yeah, it actually is, right? You know what? I never want to leave. And this is such a paradigm shift, Todd. Uh, you talk about going back into the HCC TV studios. We're really quickly learning that we can do a lot of things yeah. from our home offices thanks to technology. You know, for years, I always said I wanted to work out of my house. Now I'm ready to go back to the office, you know, and I'm successfully <laughs> working out of the house. But, uh, yeah, I do miss that face-to-face uh, -face contact in person. Um, so, Michael, we're living in a new world where everybody really, you know, if somebody hands me their cell phone in the future to use or look at, you don't want to touch it because you're afraid to. Because our cell phones carry a lot of germs. I know I'm always talking to the guys about cleaning their cameras and cleaning their laptops. But you don't want to use Windex or something like that. What are some tips you're giving folks right now for disinfecting your devices? You know, it, it's funny that over the past many, many years, there was a list, a laundry list of what we were not supposed to use on our phones, on our computer monitors, on our TV monitors. But it turns out corporate policy can change as world conditions change. Yeah. And I learned yeah. this about 
two to three weeks ago when Apple, which is very careful as they should about their products, they said, oh, by the way, now with COVID-19, it's okay to use Clorox disinfectant wipes. Now, before that, they said, you really don't want to do that. And the reason is, as I hold up one of my phones here, phones have a protective coating they come with. It protects, you know, from the grease, from the oil, from your face when you put it on your, uh, on your, on your, on your face. When you, every time you talk about it, you touch it all the times. You don't want to take off that protective coating. So you don't want to use a high percentage alcohol mixture, isopropyl alcohol. We've heard that uh, obviously many times. You can get it at CVS, Walgreens, 100%. You never want to use that. You don't want to use anything over 70% of that isopropyl alcohol. And allegedly, Clorox has just about 70%. So number one, you can use those wipes. Now, for years, I've been telling people it's okay to use solutions and sprays, you know, something like this. Here's a product called Whoosh. Uh, it is specifically made for electronic devices. Uh, the camera that I'm looking to right now on my desktop computer, it's fine. What you don't want to do is you don't want to take this. And you do not want to spray it directly onto your screen because there's an earpiece with an open hole. There's ports for your USB or USB C charging. You don't want it to get in there. But what you want to do, you want to use something like a little tiny microfiber cloth. A lot of phones sometimes come with these things. You spray it on the cloth, then you pick up the phone and you do it this way. This ensures you don't get any liquid inside the phone. So that's the biggest tip I can give you on the phone. You know, are there are there differences between brands of devices as far as cleaning them off? Because I know that uh, you're you're a Droid guy, and I've used Apple for years. Um, and I know a few years ago I was on my phone and I was out running. You know, I've got sweat on me, and I go to answer the phone, and a bead of sweat gets in the earpiece, and it's done. Never done. could get it to work properly again. Um, but using these solutions, it's safer to use it on a Droid as opposed to an uh, Apple iPhone, or is it? Do you take it as across the board measure? It's, it's really across the board uh, platform. I mean, it, you know, it's when we talk about uh, Android operating systems versus the iPhone operating system, the iOS. Really, it's the software operating system in terms of hardware. This is when we disinfect it. We only only care about the hardware at this point. Uh, most, a lot of gadgets. Uh, I'm going to hold up here not only my phone but. You talk about running. So here's little tiny earbuds right now. You see these earbuds yeah. everywhere? Well, I'll tell you what, mine sweat too, like your news when I run. And if water or any liquid gets in, they're kaput. And so you don't want to spray anything in here. So uh, it's the same thing no matter if you have a droid, if you have, now we're talking tablets, we're talking desktops, we're talking, uh, you know, monitors too. Never try to get liquid in near them. Not only is it going to potentially, you know, you know, break it. I mean, it really can short things out. It can cause a spark, and, and it goes on and on. So uh, it, it's yeah. a, these are agnostic, uh, I guess, lessons we're talking about here. Sure. So it sounds like the Clorox wipes, those type of wipes, are really a go-to thing you could use on a, va a wide variety of, if you're just looking to limit what you're buying. Right. Let me tell you some things, if that's okay, what not to use. See this baby right here? <laughs> this is very valuable right now. If you can find these in stores. These work great on many things. Do not use these directly onto your devices too. Uh, no matter what the uh, the alcohol percentage, it looks like aerosol spray, you'd have a tendency to go, ooh, let's spray this thing. Absolutely don't do that. And don't use Windex too. Windex, it's a glass cleaner. We, we grew up knowing that. All right, well, this is glass. And your TV you know, is generally glass in the front, so you'd think just spraying some Windex on there. Windex actually does have some uh, some chemicals that can harm number of different glass screens for your laptop and certainly for your uh, for your phone and so that's why i recommend using specific it type of cleaner and they come in different variances too here's another trick if you have a an eye doctor uh and you go to get an eye doctor checkup my eye doctor not only you know gives away these things to, yeah. to clean your glasses but my eye doctor um you know he just gives me some solution that cleans eyeglasses and so if you some eyeglass cleaner also, that is fine. Again, spray it directly on the wipe. Then you put it right onto the phone. Because it sounds like the eyeglasses would have the same type of protectants that you would find on your uh, on your phones as well. Yeah, it, it is. Um, I get a question a lot over the past two or three weeks on my radio show. They said, hey, listen, I like the tips, but I don't have a microfiber cloth. Can I use a paper towel? 
and I use a newspaper. No, do you do not use those because those are abrasive and those can scratch too. You really want to try to use something as soft as uh, as possible. Uh, maybe you can use a, an old, you know, a, a dish towel, but make sure that the microfiber is about as small as possible. So watch out for abrasive cloths. Watch out for, as I said, the, the paper towels or even the napkins. Don't submerge the products in cleaning solution, you know, and, and don't, you know, when, I, when you spray this thing, you don't need to sit here and go 15 to 20 times. You don't want an excessive moisture. The other thing is the frequency. You know, don't forget this. It's not so much that you're touching the phone and nobody else touches the phone. We put this phone up to our faces so many times a day. We put it down and then we go and we open doors. And yeah. then we touch countertops too, where we can pick up other germs. And then when we pick up our phone, it's saying, <laughs> I want to do this quite frequently throughout the day. Yeah, you make a good point with that because a lot of us are like, well, nobody ever touches my phone. I don't hand it to anybody. I don't use their phones. But yeah, touching other things and then handing your phone around or you using it is certainly going to get uh, stuff on there. Um, Final question on, uh, we talked a bit about computer screens, but how dirty, dirty does your, uh, does your uh, uh, laptop get when you know the, the, the keyboard itself? You know, funny, you're funny, we talk about screens, which, cause we just pretty much were, were you know, glued with a hand to our phone. Don't forget, I'm on my desktop right now. You're on your laptop right now. Those keyboards are disgusting. So I have, here's my laptop, right? Here's my keyboard. It's a, it's a wireless keyboard, right? Uh, this, has been a workhorse. I've probably had this for a good three to four years. It works great. Never thought about coming home, washing my hands. I just start typing this. This is so germ infested. It's not even funny. Laptops are too, because especially if you're kids and students, all right? So you go into, uh, you know, HCC, they come up and they, they open the laptop, they start typing, but they're touching doors and windows and walls and every school is like this too. So it's the same thing. You take this and notice every keyboard, they're cut out. There's holes behind these things. This is even more dangerous than a, uh, than a phone. Do not yeah. spray anything directly onto it. For this, there's no glass. Lysol is fine. But again, what you want to do is you want to spray it on a microfiber cloth. After that, then you take your clap and then you take your keyboard and wipe it down. I would do those keyboards regularly because, I mean, think about it. You can use phones hands-free with those things. You really can't use keyboards hand free also. And so, yeah. Up, yeah. And if you really want to be, uh, but last step, I know you got to go, but if you really want to kind of get into the 21st century and utilize all the neat technical prowesses, think about your uh, your Amazons, your, your Googles. When you talk to them, though, voice activation. Voice activation is a really smart way to start trying it to yeah. avoid less touching of the phones, less touching of the commands, less touching of your keyboards, too. Yeah, you, you, you hit the nail on the head. Just last week, I've been doing a lot of uh, in my car, sending out text messages using my voice. I hadn't done that before. I was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not one of those guys. I will pick the phone up, but you know, now I'm doing that as well. So it seems like we're dragged along with the technology, but it's great. Now that you learn how to do it. It's, it's a paradigm shift. If you think, you know, when you think about this, Shouldn't we have been doing this all our lives? Yeah. We never thought about this. It, it takes a pandemic like this realize that oh my goodness we need a new way of doing things and if there's anything that is good that is coming out of this when we get out of this thing it's processes that we think we need to be more yeah. healthy, more healthy and just be aware of what we're doing on a regular basis actually to make our lives you know healthier michael garfield the high-tech texan we have a partnership with you your show is on weekends tell us real quickly what time and where they can find it uh, 20 years running, and it's Saturdays here in Houston on 9.50 a.m. KPRC. You can also download the iHeartRadio app and listen to us worldwide. And you know, each week uh, for the past you know, almost a year right now, it has been a pleasure. We've learned so much about ACC. We spotlight the different colleges and the different opportunities, and I think more and more people now are going to be hopefully be registering online and some great opportunities. So uh, tune in, uh, 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock Central Time on those radio stations, Saturdays. Michael Garfield, the High Tech Texan, thanks for joining us today. And thank you for being here. Appreciate you joining us every day here at Up to the Minute. Of course, we're now at 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. With a, with a new show. And we'll be live tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. I'm Todd Duplantis. I'll see you next time. Up to the Minute.